The United Church of Christ Second Congregational in Westfield, Massachusetts announces its all-church annual meeting. Uh, it will be conducted online via Zoom, and you can call or email the church office in order to reserve your Zoom link, which will be emailed to you from the pastor. It's on Sunday, January 31st, 2021 at 11.30 a.m. Topics for discussion and vote, acceptance of the minutes of the 2020 all-church meetings, Report of the Nominating Committee and Election of the 2021 Leadership. Review and vote on the written 2020 Church Committee Reports. Review and vote on amendments to the 2021 Church Budget. And such other business as may legally come before the Church. All active members are expected to attend and vote. Friends of the Church are welcome to attend, but will have no vote. Thank you. Welcome to UCC Second Congregational Church. I am Reverend Barbara Hess, and I am joined today by Karen Ducharme, our Director of Music, Jay Ducharme, our soloist and technical guru who puts all of this together. Jen Thielen is our Director of Children and Family Ministries. She posts her message separately, but you can access it through the website and click on YouTube. Diana J is our liturgist this morning, and Devin Dakota rings the bell as he does every single Sunday. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whoever you are and wherever you are on your faith journey and life journey, you are welcome here at UCC Second Congregational Church. There's a special shout out to those of you who are old enough to remember Flip Wilson. The title of the sermon today is The Devil Baby Be Do It. So again, welcome. This morning's call to worship. Open our hearts and spirits this day to hear the great news of your power and presence with all your people. Fill our hearts with rejoicing as the words are proclaimed in song and story. Enliven us 
and remind us that you are with us through the pillar of fire, through the magnificent words of the prophets, through the ministry and love of Jesus Christ. Amen. in the company of those who do right in the congregation. The works of the Lord are magnificent, as they are treasured by all who desire them. God's deeds are majestic and glorious. God's righteousness stands forever. God is famous for his wondrous works. The Lord is full of mercy and compassion. God gives food to those who honor him. God remembers his covenant forever. God proclaimed his powerful deeds to his people and gave them what they belong to other nations. God's handiwork is honest and justice. All God's rules are trustworthy. They are established always and forever. They are fulfilled with the truth and right doing. God sent redemption for his people. God commanded that his covenant last forever. Holy and awesome is God's name. Fear of the Lord where wisdom begins. Sure knowledge is for all those who keep God's law. God's praise lasts forever. This morning's Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 through 22. In the intro, Moses was the first prophet. Before that, God spoke with people, but not through anyone. Prophets tell uncomfortable truths, especially speaking truth to power. These truths should be similar in nature and substance to previous prophecies, and should point the listener toward God and not the prophet. The seriousness of the prophetic word is underscored by the statement, by any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Communicating with God. Once you enter the land that the Lord your God is giving you, don't try to intimidate the detestable things those nations do. There must not be anyone among you who passes his son or daughter through fire, who practices divination and is a sign reader, fortune teller, sorcerer, or spellcaster, who converses with ghosts or spirits or communicates with the dead. All who do these things are detestable to the Lord. It is on account of these detestable practices that the Lord your God is driving these nations out before you. Instead, you must be perfect before your, the God, your Lord. Your, the, these nations you are replacing listen to sign readers and dividers. But the Lord your God doesn't permit you to do the same. 
the Lord your God will raise up a prophet like me from your community, from your fellow Israelites. He's the one you must listen to. That's exactly what you requested from the Lord your God at Hiram on the day of assembly, when you said, I can't listen to the Lord my God's voice anymore or look at this great fire any longer. I don't want to die. The Lord said to me, what they said is right. I'll raise up a prophet for them from among their fellow Israelites, one just like you. I'll put my words in his mouth and he will tell them everything I command him. I myself will hold accountable anyone who doesn't listen to my words, which that the prophet will speak in any name. However, any prophet who arrogantly speaks a word in my name that I haven't commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet must die. Now you might be wondering, how will we know which word God hasn't spoken? Here's the answer. The prophet who speaks in the Lord's name and the thing doesn't happen or come about, that's the word the Lord hasn't spoken. The prophet spoke arrogantly, do not be afraid of him. The gospel reading today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. And there was only one temple in Jesus' time. It was the temple in Jerusalem. And that's where sacrifices and worship took place. Remember that the temple in Jerusalem was the size of 25 American football fields. It was huge. Now, on a smaller scale, uh, wherever there were 10 or more Jewish families, it was required to have a synagogue. And a synagogue was where a lot of teaching took place. And so in every town, there would be a synagogue. And as people traveled through, anyone who was knowledgeable about the Torah was, would be invited to speak. And that's why Jesus and later Paul would have gotten their start by attending a service in a synagogue as soon as they entered a town for the first time. They would go where the people of God had gathered, and since they were knowledgeable about the Torah and had something to say, they would be invited to speak. This is the first teaching of Jesus in a synagogue. And so nobody knew who he was and the hostility had not built up against him. Listen now to the words from the Gospel of Mark, chapter one, verses 21 through 28. Jesus and his followers went into Capernaum. Immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and started teaching. The people were amazed by his teaching, for he was teaching them with authority, not like the legal experts. Suddenly, there in the synagogue, a person with an evil spirit screamed, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One from God. Silence, Jesus said, speaking harshly to the demon. Come out of him. The unclean spirit shook him and screamed. Then it came out. Everyone was shaken and questioned among themselves. What's this? A new teaching with authority? He even commands unclean spirits and they obey him. Right away, the news about him spread throughout the entire region of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our God is still speaking. The question is, are we still listening? Please be with me in a spirit of prayer. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. I said in the welcome that the shout out was for the people who were old enough to remember Flip Wilson, the devil made me do it. Well, for the younger people who may not have remembered Flip Wilson, he was a comedian. And the punchline or the line that he used to do whenever he got into mischief was, the devil made me do it. Well, just last week, the Bible study group was talking about the devil and evil and hell and demons. And none of them considered the devil to be someone in a red suit and a pointy tail, somewhat like the Match.com ad. I don't know whether you've seen it or not, but the Satan is dating the year 2020. And uh, nobody thinks that the devil really looks quite like that. But it is, it was a memorable ad. Uh, I believe that there is evil in the world. People who, for either power or profit, seek to do, um, endanger the lives of people. The people who do bad things so that they get power or through their power and their money, they uh, don't care about anyone else. Those people, to me, they're evil. Sometimes it's those who create toxic waste dumps and then move away and don't, they don't clean up their mess and they don't take care of what has leached into the soil and the water. You know the type of people I'm talking about. These people are not living by the golden rule. These people aren't treating others with love and respect. In fact, they're the total antithesis of what God and Jesus have taught us. That's one way I, uh, I described hell in seminary, that a person creates their own hell by choosing. Now, we always have free choice choosing to be at odds with the will of God. Mind you, God does not sever the ties here. God always wants to be in relationship with all of God's creation and all of God's creatures. But God has also given us free choice. And so when someone chooses not to be in relationship with God and chooses not to be in relationship with other people. My belief is that they are creating a uh, hell right here on earth. God is love and it is my belief that you can't align yourself with God on Sunday and then do evil or bad things to others Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. In this piece of scripture, it talks about a person who is possessed by demons. Again, I don't think it's a creature with a red suit and a pointy tail, but I feel that demons are all around us. Demons are anything or anyone who has the power over us or any human, which is not of God. I'm going to repeat that. A demon is anything or anyone who has power over another which is not of God. That power is not of God. In the Bible study, Danny said that it could be packaged beautifully as something we've always wanted. Very often, that's where the temptation comes in, because it looks so good. Power, prestige, an unhealthy 
amount of money. It could also be something which started out very innocently, maybe beautifully, and then turned into something unhealthy. It could be an unhealthy relationship. It could be alcohol, drugs, a gambling addiction. Actually, it could be any type of addiction. It's anything which has power over a human which is not of God. Anything which has power over a human which is not of God. Often in the Psalms, we hear the writer speaking of having enemies, and many times the visual image that's given is uh, a king with uh, enemies, uh, military enemies, surrounding the gate or surrounding the castle. And when we listen to that, we tend to think that that's the only type of enemy there is. But think about it for a moment. The psalm refers to the enemy uh, in a manner that they are being tormented by the enemy. So instead of thinking of the enemy as a human, or it could be a human, but uh, as military, think of what else the enemy might be. Again, it could be alcohol. It could be drugs, tobacco, food. It could be any type of addiction. Here we're going to get into the weeds a little bit. I'm not saying that all alcohol is bad. But if alcohol is, has caused a problem for a person and their family, it's a demon. Something which seems innocent can become an issue or an unhealthy obsession. If it's destroying relationships, it's keeping you from God. If it's causing you to be distracted, it's keeping you from God. And it's keeping you from living a full life with God. That's when it moves from being recreational to being a problem. That's when we look at it as being a demon. Demon-inspired and demon-fueled. What else happens when a person is caught up with addiction? The people who are suffering from addiction are often cut off from society, they are cut off from community, and they are cut off from family. The addict isn't a bad person. The addict is first and foremost, a person. The person is suffering from a disease of addiction. It's important to separate the person from the disease of addiction. Going back to the fact that a demon is anything which has a power over hum a human which is not of God, we could look at the demon of hatred which can take the form of racism, gun violence. Hatred in any form, any form, keeps us from growing closer to a loving God. I mentioned earlier that God is love. And anything which is not of love is not of God. In addition to being the embodiment of love, God also wants to be in relationship with each and every creature in creation. Just as God wants to be in relationship with all of creation and with every creature within creation, 
we need to follow God's lead and be in right relationship with creation and all of um, the people of creation. That means not only being in good relationship with our fellow humans, but also being in right relationship with the earth. It also means that we must reach out to other people in love. Yes, even those who are the most unlovable. Gospel, the Gospel of John says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, that just as I have loved you, you, are, you also are to love one another. Let me read that again. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. And in 1 John it says, If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. In another passage from 1 John, it says, But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God, God's love, abide in him? And finally, from the Gospel of Matthew, we hear, You have heard that it was said, You must love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who harass you, so that you will be acting as children of your Father who is in heaven. He makes the sun rise on both the evil and the good, and sends rain on both the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what are you doing? Don't even the Gentiles do that same? Therefore, just as your heavenly Father is complete in showing love to everyone, so also you must be complete. End quote. In other words, those who are the most unlovable might very well be under the same torment of demons. Demons might hold sway over the human, but God will always be more powerful than any force which opposes God. In fact, when someone chooses to ignore God, or when someone chooses to reject God's desire for a relationship, it might indicate that the demon has power over that person. That demon could be the demon of addiction. That demon could be the demon of hatred, the demon of injustice. They're all very powerful. But as I said, God will always be more powerful than the forces which oppose God. God is all-powerful, but God needs us to help dismantle the demon of addiction, the demon of hatred, and the demon of injustice. As you go about your week, this coming week, think about this morning's message and ask God to help you align yourself with God and ask God to help you reach out to those who are struggling with demons. If you're the one struggling with a demon and they're all around, ask God to help you win the fight. God is as close 
as your breath. And God is waiting for you to ask for help. Do it today. Do it right now. We have a time for birthdays. On February 5th, Dick Holcomb. On the 6th, Sue Foley and her sister. On the 7th, Larry Messer. On the 10th, Virginia Winley. She's going to be a 98. God bless her. And sharpest attack. On the 11th, Janine Byers. On the 13th, Jim Haas. On the 14th, Werner Lannan. On the 25th, John Kelly. On the 26th, Brian Cordes. And on the 28th, Ed Smith. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. Blessings. now to a time of joys and concerns and one joy that we have that is still a concern but it is exciting to see the power of prayer it's an update note on Charlie and we've been praying for Charlie Mary's nephew for a while after he was in a horrific accident and this came from a family member I have more good news about Charlie. He's been without the ventilator for a week now. He's walking with escorts 100 feet in the halls. They are going to do some tests on his swallowing, and that could lead to real food. Best of all, he pointed to Jessica's name on a piece of paper when asked who he was talking to. I'm thinking that means he can read. All the prayers and love everyone is sending, it's helping. So thank you for the update. It is wonderful to hear when our intercessory prayers, the prayers we pray for other people, are working. In the prayer box this week, we have uh, prayers for a successful annual meeting where we all listen with our hearts as well as our ears. Prayers of thanksgiving for all who have worked so hard stewardship and finance in particular. Also, thank you to all 
those who gave generously, even through the pandemic. And they give each and every year, thanks to all of you who give each and every year, so that UCC Second Congregational Church can remain a beacon of hope. Prayers for Linda S., Sharon B., Deborah H., Jane R., Jonathan S., Jerry B., Charlie, Anita, Liza, Jeanette, Dan, Sue F. and her siblings. Prayers for those who have been told that they have to give up smoking. Prayers for chaplains, medical staff, and all those affected by COVID. May they feel God's presence and may they each and every, may each and every one of them stay safe. Prayers for those who are recovering from or preparing for medical procedures. Now, I will open with a prayer, but then I will leave a silence so that those who want to lift up names and situations can do so. And I urge you, even though you're sitting at home, to lift it up out loud because that is actually helpful to lift it up. God hears what's in our hearts, even if we don't say anything, but it's good for us to verbalize and lift names of people and situations up to God. So I hope you'll do that. So let us be together in a spirit of prayer. What have we done, Lord? We teach and preach your word, but we don't listen carefully for you. We are so busy trying to shout above the noise of the day that we don't take time to really listen and know you. The voices of the prophets spoke to people long ago who were too busy and anxious to hear. Their words streamed in the winds of time and have come to us. We need to pay attention to your message offered through them. You are our God, the God of all creation, the God of power and love, whose mercy is offered to us. In Jesus' time, he proclaimed the good news through words and actions, reaching out to those who were troubled, alienated, cast aside. He offered healing and hope to those others turned away. Help us to learn that you can help us deal with the demons that leave our lives wounded and twisted. Help us to understand that you can offer us a new way of life through Jesus Christ. Remind us again that we have spoken the names of people and situations that concern us, praying for your healing touch, that the same touch is offered to us in Jesus' name. Now let us say aloud the names of situations and of people who we ask you stay particularly close to. Lord, we need to let go of our control issues and place our trust wholly in you, now and forever. We pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be his name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now come to a time of our offering and we appreciate anything that you can send either through the mail to Post Office Box 814, Westfield, 
Massachusetts 01086 or to our website. We appreciate anything as little as $3 to as much as the sky's the limit. We very, very much appreciate anything you can offer to help us do this ministry. Now, in gratitude for all that God has given us, we receive all that you pledge and offer. We pledge our, these gifts and our lives in God's service. Giver of the most precious gift of all, we return to you this day our thanks represented in these gifts and in the lives of all these dear people. Bless these gifts and all these people that they may be lights of your love in our dark world. Amen. Please be with me with the Common Commission and the benediction. And remember, right after the service this morning at 1130, we have our annual meeting. So be sure to tune in for that. If you haven't received the link and you want to, uh, members of the church should reach out to me on my phone or pastor at secondchurchwestfield.org. Let us go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is right, rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all persons, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now hear the benediction. Jesus comes to us offering healing and hope, speaking and acting with authority. Listen to him. Go into this world confident in God's love and healing power. Go in peace and may God's love and peace always be with you. Amen. <laughs>